Welcome to Lecture 13 on the topic of plant signals. Lecture 13 is separated into three parts and this is part two. Please listen to part one before commencing with this lecture. This lecture is part of the subject plant physiology, which is offered as a component of the Bachelor of Agricultural Technology. This degree is offered at both La Trobe University and Melbourne Polytechnic. For more information on the courses that we offer, please visit our website at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu.au. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In part two, we will be looking at two groups of hormones, the gibberellins and the cytokinins. We will be looking at the role and the function of both of these hormones. With the cytokinins, we will also be investigating their interaction with other hormones. After auxins, gibberellins were the second group of plant hormones to be characterised, and this occurred in the 1950s. The illustration on your slide is a chemical composition of gibberellic acid. There are at least 136 gibberellins have been identified to date. They have important roles in plant height and stem elongation, seed germination, the transition to flowering and pollen development. Gibberellic acid was first discovered in the 1930s by Japanese scientists. It was isolated from a fungus, which it was then named after. This fungus had infected rice plants, causing the plants to grow too tall and eliminated seed production. Spectacular responses were obtained from experiments on cabbage, a rosette plant, as can be seen on the image. Plants, normal plants without additional GA are shown on the left hand side, while plants with GA um, showed e excessive stem elongation. Other experiments conducted on corn where dwarf plants were exposed to gibberellic acid. This increased stem elongation and resulted in tall looking plants. The, illust the, slide, the illustration on the slide demonstrates this. On the screen is a visual representation of the GA biosynthesis pathway. This figure can be found in the recommended textbook. The bios biosynthesis of GA generally occurs in three stages, with these three stages taking place in different locations of the plant cell, the plasmid, endoplasmic reticulum and cytosol. It is not required for you to learn all the steps of this pathway, but only that there are three stages and a number of intermediate compounds. Some of these intermediate compounds are types of GA. These types are donated by figures, for example, GA12 and GA53 are both intermediates in the pathway, which then go on to be oxidised into another form of GA. Gibberellins can stimulate stem and root growth. GA has little effect on stem elongation in tall plants, since GA is not limiting in these plants. However, in genetically modified dwarf plants or rosette species, or some of the grasses, GA applied to the plant can cause extreme stem elongation. Root growth in dwarf pea and Arabidopsis plants, in which GA biosynthesis is blocked, is affected. Applications of GA enhances both the root and the shoot growth. We will look at shoot growth in a bit more detail. SCM is short for shoot apical meristem. In the SAM, NOx proteins regulate the growth by maintaining low levels of GA and high levels of cytokinin. The figure on your screen from the Hormonal Input and in Plant Mechanism, a Balancing Act, a paper in cell and developmental biology illustrates the pathways. You do not have to learn the pathway here other than to note 
that it um, SAM hormone concentrations result in different outcomes. For example, low GA promotes cell division in the leaf primordia, while high concentrations of cytokinins maintain the stem cell's ability to differentiate into different types of cells. In the figure on the screen, the different colours on the shoot apical meristem illustrate different levels of components. For example, the yellow GA indicates low levels of gibberellin, while the red CK on the screen in the centre shows high levels of cytokinin. The green colours shows the emerging leaf primordia which was restricted by GA. And this is where cell differentiation occurs. Gibberellins have a role in the transition from vegetative to reproductive development. That is, they speed it up. In many conifers, the juvenile phase, or vegetative phase, can last 20 years. Treatment with gibberellic acid can induce cone formation in 14-week-old seedlings of the giant sequoia and saplings of the white spruce. Gibberellins can influence sex determination. For example, in cucumber, hemp and spinach, GA promotes the formation of the steminite male flowers while inhibiting the pistillite female flowers. In other plants, such as maize, GA suppress stamen formation and promote pistil formation. Gibberellins can influence sex determination. For example, in cucumber, hemp and spinach, GA promotes the formation of the steminite male flowers while inhibiting the pistillite female flowers. In other plants, such as maize, GA suppress stamen formation and promote pistil formation. Gibberellins promote fruit set and parthenocarpy. Initiation of fruit growth can be stimulated by the application of GAs. This may occur without pollination, resulting in a parthenocarpy fruit, which is fruit without seeds. This is how the variety Thompson seedless is produced. Fruits are stimulated to enlarge by treating with GA. You can see the difference in the image on the slide between a bunch of grapes that have been stimulated with GA and a bunch that have not. Our increased understanding of how GA and GA biosynthesis and functions in plants have allowed us to evolve commercial uses for this compound. The major uses are to promote growth of fruit crops, stimulate the barley malting process in beer brewing, and increase sugar yield in sugar cane. Tallness can be a disadvantage in some crops, for example, cereal crops grown in cool, damp climates in Europe, where logging is a problem, makes it difficult to harvest the grain. Therefore, producing shorter plants reduces the lodging and increases yield. Even dwarf varieties of wheat are sprayed with inhibitors of GA to further reduce stem length. This brings us to the end of the GA section and now we will look at the hormones cytokinins. Now we're going to look at the plant hormones called the cytokinins. The illustration on your screen is the chemical structure of a cytokinin. They were discovered in search for the factors that stimulate plant cells to divide. This process is called cytokinesis. Many substances were tested in an effort to initiate and sustain the growth of stem tissues in culture. For example, when coconut milk was added to the culture medium, the most dramatic result was obtained. The contained cell division of the mature, differentiated cells from a variety of tissues and species into the formation of what is called callus tissue. Callus is a mass of disorganised, undifferentiated cells. 
It turned out that coconut milk contained the cytokine in zeatin. The image on your slide shows the results from these experiments with the addition of the cytokinin and the resulting callus growth. Some bacteria and fungi that are closely associated with plants produce cytokinins. Infection of the plant tissues can induce cell division and the formation of special structures. For example, infection by the microbial Arbuscule, or crown gall, causes fasciation. Fasciation is an abnormity in a plant in which a cell enlarges into a flat ribbon-like shape, resembling several stems fused together. This infection occurred on witch's broom. Cytokinins can promote shoot growth. They do this by increasing cell division in the shoot apical meristem, SAM. This experiment on tobacco plants lacking in cytokinin shows strongly inhibited shoot growth and little or no flower production. The wild type plant is on the left. The images on the slide reveal sections of shoot apical meristems. There is a reduction in the size of the apical meristem when cytokinins are applied. For further details and a review on the mechanism, please return to the slide Plant Hormones Inputs into Shoot Apical Meristems for further details about how cytokinin can reduce cell division. Cytokinins can inhibit root growth. In contrast to its role in the shoot, cytokinins reduce root growth. This may be due to the distribution of the formation of the vascular tissue, particularly the phloem. The size of a meristem is determined by the rate at which the cells divide, minus the rate at which the cells exit the meristem by differentiation. Cytokinins accelerate this process in the root tip, causing a decrease in the size of the root apical meristem. Let us look at the role of auxin to cytokinin ratios. The differentiation of tobacco pith segments into either roots or shoots depends on the ratio of the hormones auxin to cytokinin. When there is high auxin to cytokinin ratio, root growth is stimulated. While in shoots where there is low auxin to cytokinin ratio, shoots are stimulated. Where you um, obtain intermediate levels of auxin to cytokinin ratios, the growth results as undifferentiated callus. The figure on the slide illustrates the interaction of cytokinin and auxins and how they influence processes in plant cell growth and division. As noted on the previous slide, when auxin and cytokinin ratios are similar, undifferentiated growth or formations of callus results. When you have high levels of auxins, which occur with low levels of cytokinins, you have stimulation of roots. While the opposite to this is low level of auxins and high levels of cytokinins, you have stimulation of shoots. Therefore, the interaction of the hormone is very important in many of the control processes in the plant's growth and development. Cytokinins promote lateral bud growth. In a plant with an intact shoot apical meristem, auxin from the shoot apex inhibits cytokinin biosynthesis. After decapitation, auxin flow is elim eliminated and cytokinin levels increase and the lateral bud growth is initiated. The lateral bud meristem eventually produces its own auxin and inhibits further accumulation of cytokinin. After this lecture, please take time to review the wheat practical where shoot apical meristems were removed. Do the results that you obtained from these experiments correlate 
with the observations and discussions on cytokine and presented here. Senescence in plants is the program aging process of a plant. Cytokinins can delay leaf senescence. Evidence presented from tobacco plants expressing, expressing the IPT gene remain green while the wild type plants have started to senesce. Using our understanding of how cytokinins influence plant growth, we can apply this to agriculture. For example, decaying leaf senescence could extend the photosynthetic productivity. Cytokinin production can reduce damage by predators. For example, GM tobacco has a 70% reduction or more resistance to hornworm. Breeding of rice varieties, indicia produces more grains thus higher yield due to the higher levels of cytokinin in the inflorescence. The plates on the screen demonstrate the results just discussed. I'd like you to read the following chapters from the recommended textbook, Tays and Zeiger, 2010 Plant Physiology, 5th edition. Chapter 20 on gibberellins, regulators of plant height. And chapter 21, cytokinins, regulation of cell division. Please make notes on these readings and insert them into the lecture here. So that brings us to the end of Lecture 13 on Plant Signals, Part 2. After you have read the recommended literature and watched this video, you should be able to now give some in-detailed roles of gibberellin. What functions do gibberellin perform in the plant and how do they do it? You will also be able to do the same for cytokinins. Cytokinins, as you have learnt, also interact with other hormones and you will be able to give a detailed example of how this may occur. This is the end of this lecture.